Okay, so let's go and install the first homework from CIS Haskell course. And in this homework we have two uh, main tasks to accomplish. The first one is to create a function that will validate the credit card numbers by using the loon algorithm, which is outlined over here. And then we have to solve the towers of Hanoi problem, which is a really nice exercise in recursive thinking. So let me just go and open my console. And you should probably you know, read the lecture notes and also the homework PDF before you can follow along. So I have loaded my homework file in my GHCI and now we can continue. Um, one of the main you know, things you should try to achieve in Haskell is to uh, build complexity from uh, simpler el from bottom up so you, you generally want to define a simple function that you know that you're sure what is doing and then use it to define more complex functions as you will see later you don't want to have one massive function that does everything and this is true in other programming languages as well you, you always want to you know have smaller bu building blocks now this is very obvious here because we have to work with the uh, single digits of a number rather than the whole number so it would be useful to have a small function which will give us the last digit of a number uh, the one which will cut off the last digit of a number and then you know we can use those two to create more complex function that will take a number and return the list of all its digits in a nice convenient way so let's do this um, let's first quickly take a look uh, compare for example a C how we would do this in C uh, as opposed to Haskell so we say that we have a function called last digit which will return an integer and we take uh, integer as argument we bind it to the name X and in the body of the function we would uh, write something like return um, x modulus 10 to get the last digit of a number. Now you can see this part over here would uh, you know, correlate to some extent in this to this part in Haskell which is a type signature of a function and in Haskell we don't write the names of the arguments here in the type signature you know like you see we don't do this like if, you, if you write the lowercase letter or letters in here this would be a type variable which we'll see a little bit later uh, we just put you know arguments in order here after the function name separated by spaces so you know if we have if we want to take a character y here we would have to do it like this and just you know put the name of the binding name over here and they go in order and the last value here is the resulting uh, type actually the type of the resulting value so um, let's see. We can we can solve this by saying using the mod function since we don't have the modulus operator in in Haskell. I mean we we could define one, but uh, I'll leave this for now. Uh, so we can say mod, and as you can see, it takes one argument of type A, another argument of the same type, and returns a value of the same type. And it doesn't care what type it is as long it as it belongs to the integral type class so you know integer is part of the integral type class and we can say x 10 and in Haskell we apply functions as well by using space instead of you know braces like this so this would be something in C more C like syntax and this is essentially the first exercise solved so let's just take a quick look and uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, as you can see, we have wrong type signature. Um, what I want to do? Last digit from whatever, and we get eight. So there are other ways in which we could have solved this. Mm, there is uh, infix notation, which essentially allows us to write any any function which takes two arguments as some kind of quasi operator like so and uh, you know essentially we can you know put the first argument of function left of it and then the second argument right of it 
in Haskell we can also partially apply a function. Uh, so let me just quickly explain how this would work. So let's say that we have function f which takes integer x and uh, integer y, for example, and returns um, their sum x plus y, like so. And if we were to try do something like this in C, we would fail because we are missing the second argument. But in Haskell, what happens is we get a new function, I'll just call it f prime uh, for now, which expects another integer y. So we are basically left with just one argument which we didn't apply. And the body of this function would, you know, internally look something uh, like this to plus y. So we have essentially, you know, applied x, which now just gets replaced from this to number two in here, and we are expecting only y now. And then we can, you know, use f prime, uh, you know, three, and the result would be final value. Which would be five in this case. So um, we can do this in Haskell, not in C, obviously. And um, let's let's see how we can achieve this. So since since mod actually takes, you know, we we have to be careful about the order of the arguments. We have x first and then ten. We cannot just you know do something like ten and expect uh, things to work. But because if we apply ten first and it's 10 divided by some number uh, and and the remainder of this division uh, rather than the other way around. And we can get around this by using the very useful function called flip, which takes a function as an argument rather than a single value, and this function has to be of this type. It takes an uh, argument of type A, argument of type B, and those two can be the same type, you know, this can be integer and integer, this is just so that we can, uh, you know, differen differentiate what's happening. It takes a function with first argument a, b, and returns a value of c, and then you can see it get gives us a function which takes b and a as arguments and returns a c. Essentially, we have flipped these two arguments. So let's pass a mod function into the flip. And now we get a resulting uh, a new function out of this, so we can partially apply it with ten now, and then you know if we if I were to you know say twenty now, we would get uh, <coughs> zero in this case, or twenty one we would get one, so we are expecting just one parameter x in here, and uh, we can omit this x because essentially we have we already have a function in here, so we can just bind this resulting function to a name called last digit, and this, sh this should work properly. So let's try it, and we get 8, and everything's fine. So we can do the same thing for the second um, you know, exercise. Uh, we just do flip div, because we are dividing this time by 10, essentially cutting off the last uh, digit. Okay, so now Let's go to the exercise 2. Uh, we need to make a function which will take integer and return the list of its um, digits. So let's first say that we want to bind in this uh, input integer to the name x. And then we'll say, okay, so I want I want the last last digit of a number. So now we, we can use these previously defined functions. And we'll say, okay, so give me the last digit of x, and then we can use cons operator, which is used for constructing lists, for putting uh, cons will essentially, you know, take a single element on the left side and a list on the right side, and it will connect the two. It will put x to the front of the list. So we we can see now that our function to rev digits uh, returns list as a value, so we can. We can safely put it here, um, and we are ses essentially using a recursion here. And we also need to pass it a number, and w we could pass x, but this wouldn't make any sense. We need to. We already took the first, the last uh, digit of x, so we need to, you know, essentially pass it the rest of the number without the last digit. So let's use 
drop last digit x and now we need to take care of the edge case because this would go to infinity we don't have any stopping rule and we need to stop uh, constructing this list when we get to zero so when, when x is zero we essentially want to return empty list to finally close this recursion so let's just see if this works um, whatever and we get the list of all the digits in the reverse order okay um, so now we need to make a function that will double every second number in the list starting on the left so let's first take care of the edge cases and actually take a look at the type signature we are uh, getting a list as an argument and we need to return the list as the resulting value so um, what happens when we for example get empty list well we should obviously return just an empty list so that that would be the first edge case now we need to you know, take care of the second edge case so what happens if we have only one element in the list and this is essentially how you denote one element you can also define define strictly uh, you know two elements in a list so and what you will do in this case but we'll see that later um, so in this case we just want to return x because we want to double every every second number not every first and x is the you know, first element of a list um, and now we come to the mid of our function and you know since we have uh, all this all these cases will be matched from the top to the bottom so if the first case is not true then it skips to the second and now after second case if the second case doesn't pass we are we know that we uh, have at least two elements in the list so we can we can we could do something like this x y uh, but then we need to make another general case uh, after we have defined this we, we need to make the case for the you know for the rest of the list uh, what what will it do if we have more than three elements and we can we can skip this part by deconstructing our list into you know x which is the first element because now we are sure that we have you know two or more elements and the second element would be y and then the rest of the list would be y's and the rest of the list can also be an empty list this is this is also you know covered with this so if you don't understand it you know just think about it for a little so now we know that we have x and we will not touch it so we will you know just leave it at its place at the beginning of the list and then we have y which is a second element which we need to double and then we just need to you know double every other in the rest of the list and since we have all already covered edge cases this should this should work nicely so let's just test this out I'll just use this function to test everything like so and of course we get you know every uh, second digit doubled so we have two here which is four then eight is left alone then we have nine which is 18 and so on and now um, we need to define a function that will calculate the sum of all the digits in every integer in a list but this is not really true because by this definition we would get again a list of integers and instead we need to just get a single integer from a list of integers so essentially what we need to do is you know first uh, add together all the digits from numbers that has that have two or more digits and uh, you know we would have nine here after this uh, operation and then we need to sum all of those um, all of those values into one single value so let's see how we can do this uh, you know roughly and then we'll improve our solution um, first of all we have function called sum which will you know um, take a list and uh, return a sum of all the elements within this list and then we have a function called 
map, which is very useful. It takes a function that goes from A to B and uh, takes a list of A's and returns a list of B's. Essentially it applies this function to every element of a list. So let's see how we can use this. Um, firstly we need to you know, uh, get the list of all of this um, all of the digits from this digit, so this would be a list of lists, let me just show you what I mean. So we can map um, function to rev digits to this list over here, and we are essentially getting the list of uh, lists, as you can see we have a a 81, uh, actually 18, which is you know split into the list of digits, 8 and 1, and then what we need to do so I had a small interruption. Um, right, where are we? Yeah. So essentially, essentially, we want to you know uh, map all of this, and then what, what, what? Uh -huh, yes, we want to uh, also map uh, sum to all of this uh, list. So this will this will give us you know uh, final values, the sum of all these lists in in a single list. And uh, and then we also need to you know sum all of this together as well. So this would be some kind of final solution here. Now let's try to implement this in our code. So first we get the list of x's, and uh, we want to map to wrap digits to our list of x's. After this. We want to uh, map sum to our list of this axis, and then we want to sum all of the resulting values here. So, uh, if you're confused, what this sign does, it, it's essentially just a replacement for for braces. So everything right right of it will be grouped together in some sense like so. So this is just a shortcut so that we don't have to write all these um, uh, braces around our expressions. And let's check if this works now. Mm, so we want to do something like this. Um, and we get 6, so we have 3 over here, we get 2, 1, which is 3, and it results in 6, so it's, it's generally correct. But uh, now we have uh, mapping in several cases over here and sums in several places. So let's see how we could improve our solution. And we, we can use function composition to achieve this. So um, you, you should remember, you know, function functional composition from your high school or whatever. It's very simple. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the composition operator, which is dot. And essentially, it takes a function uh, from B to C and a function from A to B, and it combines them together and gives us a function from A to C. So, if you're not sure what function composition is, you should probably look uh, up the explanation on the internet. And uh, let's see what we can do. So, uh, two rev digits uh, gives us a list, and sum takes a list as an argument and returns a single value. So we could, for example, do a composition of sum and two rep digits. And this essentially gives us a new function, which you know first gets the digits of all the num uh, all the numbers uh, of a number and then sums all those digits together. So we can now map this to our X's. Notice that I've put the braces here, so because this is the first argument of the map, and then we can just um, sum all of this uh, together like so. So this should be this should be the correct solution now, and we get six. So let's try to improve this a little bit more here. So, mm, 
we could do essentially something like this. We could do composition between sum and the re resulting function of partially applied map to this function. And then again we just get the function as a result and we do not need this axis. So let's reload this and test it and we get 6 again. And this is also what's known as um, a point free style or also known as pointless style. So it depends. Sometimes it's uh, it's cleaner to write things in this way, and sometimes you know it's it's not real. It's all just I'll just uh, return this in the previous form. Okay, and so finally we get to exercise five, where where we need to implement fully a loon algorithm. So let's do this now. And let let's just take a look at what what it actually says. So we need to double the value of every second digit beginning from the right, blah blah blah. We need to add all digits together including first we need to add these uh, uh, numbers with double digits and get the resulting value. Then we need to you know, uh, divide it by 10, the final uh, sum, and uh, if, if, uh, if, the, if, if the remainder of this division is zero, then the number is valid. So let's let's try to implement this. So we get some integer x, and firstly, what we said, we need to double every second digit. So uh, we'll just use um, right. So so we need to um, first reverse the digits. So get the list of some digits from x. Uh, then of course we need to mm, double every other digit and then we need to um, sum all the digits that we have using this algorithm over here and then um, we, we should uh, we should uh, divide this by 10 so we can do something like um, flip mod 10 and uh, of course we, we need to you know, get um, we need to flip arguments so that we can uh, put this into a mod and divide it by 10 and get the remainder and then we also need to check if this is equal to 0 so we, we can do this by partial applying the equal equal function over here like so and this should in theory work so let's see okay it compiled so loon from you know whatever and it's true that's somehow fishy false so I guess I managed to guess the correct number on the first try Let's just take um, some example if it's here. Okay, so, so I've just retyped this credit card number over here and it appears it's correct, so as expected. And let's just try and improve this a little bit more. So let, let's try to use composition. Qu quite often you can just, you know, replace um, these dollar operators with dots and everything will generally work but of course you need to you know fully understand what you're actually doing here so let's see and it works and sure enough it's it's true okay so now now we have come to the final uh, final assignment and now we need to solve the towers of Hanoi problem so as you can see we, we have some types defined here for us we have a peg which is essentially um, one one layer of Hanoi tower and we have um, move actually I think peg, pegs, peg is actually the, the this thing over here the stick okay so um, we need to somehow recursively uh, figure out what moves to make to get all of this um, all, all these layers from one from the left sticks to 
to the right, following the rules over here, and you should read them. So let's see how we can do this. So, in essence, Hanoi is you know j just a function that moves uh, you know items from from the left uh, stack to the right stack by using uh, you know the middle peg as a helper. So so let's somehow you know define this argument. So first we have the number of layers, then we have the a, which is the left uh, the left peg. Let me just call it left, middle, and right. Okay, and um, so the idea is to in, in in Hanoi is to you know somehow recursively you know, split the work. And as I said, uh, Hanoi is just a function that moves a specif specified number of layers from left um, left peg to the right peg using the middle peg. So let's see how we can implement this. Now, um, Hanoi will return a list of moves, so we'll essentially have to somehow build this list. So we can say, okay, uh, so we can use Hanoi uh, to move the remaining n minus one elements from uh, from you know left. To, uh, to the uh, center first by using the right peg, like so, and then this will you know result in the list of moves. And so now we are focusing on our current move, which will essentially be just you know m move uh, move the element from A to uh, from uh, left to right. And then we can say uh, Hanoi. Uh, uh, so m move move the you know re remaining elements n minus one from uh, from center uh, actually from yeah, from middle uh, to to right by using the left left peg as a helper. So, so let's see if this will work now. Oh yeah, uh, I, for I forgot one thing. Um, we need to take uh, care of our edge case, which is when we have zero layers, then we don't care about the arguments, we just return empty list. Okay, and this, this is obviously a concatenation operator for lists. Let's now go into GHCI, see if it compiles, and note in scope C. Oh, it's not, it's not center, it's um, middle over here. Okay, like so, and let's try Hanoi. Um, what we'll call it, let's say that we have like three layers and we have. Uh, a, B, and C. That's those are the names of the pegs. Actually, I'll we'll call call them um, left, right, and middle. And we get hopefully the correct result. This this should be the general idea. Okay, so this is uh, the solution for the first homework. I hope that you managed to catch something and I'll try to make a new video soon.